All right, well, good afternoon. We are out camping this weekend. We, with, we have the littles with us, so we decided, you know, we do love tent camping, but maybe, you know, they're three and four years old, so let's do a cabin, get them started, uh, and then slowly branch into tent camping. But we are at Platte River State Park here in Nebraska, Park 2621, and so we're going to be doing a lot this weekend, uh, but part of what we're doing is parks on the air. And I'm really excited to, to get the antenna set up and get the radio going. But this is something I did want to talk about. Actually, when I came out today, my plan was to do a video for you guys on the, um, the ham sticks, right? Because I've been loving the ham sticks for Poda lately. They've been doing really, really well. But what's interesting about this setup is that, you know, I could drive somewhere else into the park and, and set up with the car and put the ham stick on the mag mount on top of the car. But I really kind of want to operate, you know, while the kids are running around, operate here. I think I might set up the radio right there, actually, uh, and, and set up an antenna. But where we park the car is, you know, a, a little bit of ways away. It's not right in front of the cabin, and there's not a little drive. So it's a little bit of a little walkway up to where we park the car. So doing the ham sticks actually won't be the best setup if I want to be operating from the cabin. So this is one of those scenarios. If you guys haven't seen my other video, uh, I'll put a link to it in one of these corners. I did a video on what to pack for Poda. And in that, I actually said, bring two antennas, bring two different styles of antennas. And this is exactly why, because I thought I was gonna be operating with the ham sticks this weekend, but it turns out I'm actually gonna be using my NFED half wave. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the NFED half wave into a tree and essentially drop the transformer box on the ground and then run coax over here. So actually, I'm scouting a place right now, kind of a, a good place to put the NFED half wave. And I think as we walk down here a little bit, it's kind of nice, there's a creek down here. But So the cabin's right there, I could easily, I think this is the tree. And then we're gonna use the throw out and we're gonna throw that uh, line right up into the tree, probably put the transformer, I'll probably have to hike down a little bit. This isn't a super tall tree, I guess maybe 30 feet, maybe. So we're gonna throw the half wave and I'll probably end up pulling the end of it over that way and doing an inverted V. So instead of a sloper, since it's not a super tall tree, and since I don't have a lot of room this way to pull it out and have a nice sloper, I think we're gonna go with an inverted V setup for today. So I'll set up the camera so you guys can see at least a little bit of how I will throw that into the tree. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I think we might go explore the park here for a little bit before I actually get on the air. Um, and I'll take you guys with me. I'll show you guys around this park. It's a beautiful park. We're spending all weekend around here. Uh, the state parks in Nebraska are fantastic. We really like them. And this one, they've done a lot of work with the playgrounds. So the kids will hopefully have a really fun time. There's a pond slash lake here that you can fish. So we actually have some family coming out and visiting us tonight and tomorrow. Um, and so they're going to come out, bring the kids, enjoy it. Of course, you got the fire pit to have the fire. So it's gonna be a good weekend. Let's get this antenna up into the tree. So this is the throw line that you guys saw in my packing video. So what we're gonna do is this is the rope and we're gonna untwine a little bit here. We don't need the full thing. Uh, it'll end up all needing to come off though because we're gonna actually have to pull that through. So we will unspool the whole thing, but again, we won't need this whole line. And usually what I'll do is I'll keep a lot of it on the spool while I'm throwing just so I don't get all tangled in it. I only take out what I need to throw. And then after it's up over the tree, that's when I'll unspool the rest. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna unspool this. When I'm throwing these tree weights, you'll see how I do it. I do kind of a side lasso. So I get some weight going and then I release it. And you know, admittingly it takes a few throws, but we do end up getting it into the tree. I think we got a pretty good amount here. Let's see if I can have a good throw on number one. All right, that's what we were looking for right there. So third time was the charm. We got it out. I actually misjudged how much I needed. So the weight's suspended in the air right now. Still dangling, still dangling. All right, we finally hit the ground, so we should be good. So now what we do is we take out the infed half wave. We're gonna tie it to the end of this rope. We're gonna go over to the rope 
and we're going to start pulling. So that'll pull, it'll follow the rope up, up and over the branch. And we'll see if we need an inverted V or if we can get a sloper. I was actually able to get a little further than I thought. Uh, so we might actually be able to do a good sloper back to the deck here. What I don't want to happen though is we're going to have a lot of little kids running around and I don't want this to be a trip hazard. So I do want to keep it back here in the woods a little bit. I don't want it right up against the house with the kids running around. Don't want them tripping over it. So, okay, so let's tie this and then uh, we'll pull it up. Okay, so we tied the end of the rope to the end of the end fed. I kind of have it spooled out here on the ground. And I'll give you guys a look. You guys can follow that yellow line all the way up. You can see it kind of goes through these two branches up onto another tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trek down to the end of the rope, try not to get into any poison ivy, and, uh, and pull it up. So we're gonna have to trek down here. Okay, so let's get to pulling. All right, so I had to recruit the wife to come help me, but what I did was essentially pull it, got it remotely tied. I'm gonna tighten it up when I actually get up there. I may need to come back down. And then uh, I kind of just tie it off to a stake in the ground. Probably gonna angle that stake a little bit so that when I pull up, it can be taut. So we're gonna head back up to the top, tighten it up, hook up the coax, and uh, we should have, it was actually a little bit of a sloper. It comes down a little bit off the branch, but it's mainly in a sloper configuration. All right, and this is the other end. So this is the transformer that we put a stake in. We tied it so it's nice and taut. You can see that line runs up all the way into the trees out there. A nice little sloper. I'll be curious to see how this performs. I, I have good luck with the transformer being on the ground. Some people don't. Um, some people hoist this part up into the air. I like leaving this on the ground. So we will run coax from there and we're nice and close. We can even be in the shade a little bit. Set the radio up, we can come out if it's nice tomorrow, but nice and shaded. Perfect little spot, and hopefully out of the way of the little kids. We will see. And speaking of the family, <laughs> you ready to camp? You ready? Yeah? All right, just wake it up from naps, getting going. He wants to help. Oh, you want to help? Okay, you want to yeah. get the radio out? You want to get the radio out? Let's get the radio out, come on. Let's do that. Zemmet. All right. Okay, same high as Emmett. Same high as Emmett? Yeah. Right, so we found zip lines. We go all the way down with some springs at the end. Ready to go? Yeah. All right, we should have mommy record it. How high you go? Oh, yep. One, uh, two, three. Let's do it. All right. Ready to go? Yeah. So a little bit later at night, 7.49, one thing I had not done on parks on the air before is running FT8. Usually when I'm doing these parks, I'm heading out to the park, we're doing really quick activations. Um, it hasn't been on camping trips. And so I usually don't pack the laptop and try to make FT8 work. But this time I did just wanna get a few contacts in. So we're on our last night of the trip, it's Sunday night. And I have logged, let's see here, if we look at hammers, over here, one, two, three, four, five. We've, we've logged about six FT8 contacts. And I think, you know, what I want to do is really test out if FT8 is something I would want to run on POTA activations. And I think the conclusion I'm coming to is it's really easy to make contacts on FT8, right? Because it's really low power signals. Um, so pretty easy to get responses. However, it is, it's a lot slower than running single sideband, right? To do these contacts, those back and forth take a while, whereas on single sideband, you know, for me being a time limited operator here with little kids, uh, I'm trying to get as many contacts as I can in in a short amount of time. And I can already tell you, FT8 is not the mode to do that. FT8 though may be good uh, and actually is probably perfect for if you have a compromised antenna setup, 
if you are operating in an area or if you're operating QRP or you're operating in an area with really high noise, um, it could be perfect, right? Because if you are in a scenario where you're not going for a high number of contacts, but what you're going for is just to activate the park, just to get those 10 contacts, FT8 might be perfect because those eight contacts came in quick um, and there's been a lot of other activity on FT8. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of a break here and then I'll probably come back and I'm gonna do a little bit of single sideband just to end up the trip. Uh, probably do 20 meters, 20, 40 meters for some reason here is really noisy. Uh, I don't know if it's the air conditioner or what at this little uh, cabin we've got here, but 40 meters is extremely noisy. So I've been sticking on 20 and having really good results. Um, so probably gonna stick on 20 meters for just a little bit here on single sideband. Well, I'm obviously back home now from the camping trip and it was a really successful, fun family vacation and also successful on the ham radio front. So I apologize in this video, I really did intend to put more video of me actually operating, but the way it turned out when I was operating, I actually wore headphones most of the time while operating just so I wasn't disturbing. Uh, we had family that was coming and they were playing around the campfire and they were having a good time. So I wore headphones most of the time. So I didn't get a lot of recording done on the single sideband voice side, but the results were fantastic. I actually came up one contact short of 200. So over the course of two separate days, uh, I want to say, you know, maybe two, two and a half hours of operating time, getting 199 contacts. I'll put a map up right now of where all those contacts were. It was really cool. I got to work two Alaska stations. The Alaska stations usually are really hard for me to hear. We actually got two of them during that time. We got one from Venezuela, and we also got one contact from 125 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Uh, that contact actually told me that that's exactly where he was located, which was really cool. So, you know, it was a ton of fun. That NFAN antenna ended up working out great. So going back to that thing of making sure you always take two antennas in case the first antenna that you intend to use doesn't really work well for where you are operating. But a good vacation. Uh, we plan to check out more of those parks. That was, again, Platte River State Park, Park K2621. A lot of really good parks right in that area in Nebraska, right along that Platte River. There's Louisville State Park, Mahoney, Two Rivers. There's a bunch of parks that we'll probably go through there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions on anything I did, anything I used, definitely leave it down in the comments. I try really hard to respond to all the comments with questions that I can help out with. And hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button. If you don't mind hitting that thumbs up button, it really does help these videos get out there uh, and get more reach, more ham radio videos on the way for you guys. Hopefully, I will see you guys in the next one. And until then, tech on.